When a celebrity brand is super overpriced, that's almost always a surefire way to know that the celebrity isn't actually involved in the brand, it's just being paid for the use of their name. Oh my god, I could go on about this one forever because I actually know about the profit margins. Hello everyone, it's me. Harry, this stream is gonna be a follow-up of my review from my Simply and Illogical main channel video. We're gonna go through the comments on this video and then I have all the stuff right here. But I have the pleasing Sheen Gun Kelly's I'm Lost Too. Also have Tyler the Creator's nail polish, which came in just today. And uh, yeah, no, no filter. There, there is no filter. <laughs> Are we spilling tea? Shit, I don't even have my tea. Bam! Before we move forward, I'm gonna do a poll and ask you who you're a fan of. We always have to state the bias. Are you a fan of Harry Styles? And it's okay if you are or aren't. Disclose your biases in the poll. It is a mandatory requirement for participating in this chat. Oh, most people are saying no. What about Harry Potter? Yes, uh, that's that's not who I mean. Wrong Harry. Harry? Harry Potter? Harry Styles? Oh my God, I just realized. I've been saying Harry Styles like I think of Harry Potter. That's how much I know of Harry Styles. Only 24% of you are a fan of Harry Styles. Okay, so I'm only gonna get like this much shit. Let's do another one. Are you a fan of machine? Can I type this word? Machine Gun Kelly. You have to pick one. If you're like kind of a fan, then just, just say yes. I like your British accent. I'm a Brit and I think you sound posher than me. Petition for you to keep it up the whole stream. Okay, I will try. I try so hard, but yet, you know, people tell me it's not that great. <laughs> So there's more people who are fans of Harry Styles than are fans of Machine Gun Kelly. So the last nail polish by a male celebrity is Tyler, the creator. I must admit, probably the person I knew the least about. 83% said no. Interesting. I was thinking this one would be more because I thought he was like more prominent, especially with the YouTube and creative community. I don't know why I thought that. So we have the most fans of Harry Styles in this chat and then Tyler, the creator fans and then Machine Gun Kelly fans. So that's funny. I was definitely expecting more people to be fans, but that's cool. I would really like us to look through the comments. So get ready, buckle up. We are going to the YouTube comment section. Not your mom's nail polish is literally a shade of pink that all our moms had in their makeup cabinet. Yeah, I did see comments about the use of the language, not your mom's nail polish, not just by MGK. They try and like use women, especially like moms as an insult. And that is a very strange thing in effort to sound edgy. Like it's weird. Also the color that that was referencing was like a light pink. <laughs> like. I don't understand. So in the same vein, I did see a lot of comments like this one. So true in calling items for men puts more emphasis on the stigma of men using it. I think gendering products is so stupid, especially when pretty much all products work for any human. Yes, absolutely. I do want to point out though, just in fairness to both of the brands that I reviewed, the for men wasn't prominent language used at the forefront of their own websites. However, the media used that kind of stuff a lot, specifically like gender neutral or unisex, as if to imply that other nail polish wasn't unisex or gender neutral. <sighs> I don't, like so many men coming out with nail polish in the last few years, it doesn't seem that revolutionary to me, who is someone who is so invested in the nail painting world, where I know for a fact on Instagram, a lot of accounts I follow, there's men and, you know, not just the traditional woman who have been painting their nails for years. So maybe it does feel frustrating to those people to see a bunch of men deciding now is the time to, you know, launch a brand and make some money. Once the balls are off, there's nothing special about it. Christine 2022. Did I say this? Oh my God, I said this. <laughs> oh, I meant the pleasing balls. This ball. <laughs> Do we like Harry's balls? <laughs> Look how big it is. Like <laughs> They really are so big. You want a comparison here? This is easy to hold. It is closer in size to a pen. That is how you apply nail polish ergonomically. This, I don't know what to tell you. It says on the website it's optional, like you can take this off. Use this and then that's more ergonomic, but it's very short, which is like kind of weird to like hold something like this short and try and paint. I'm sorry, but like no one's hand is as big. 
Okay, we're we're having fun with Harry's balls. Apologies to the 23% of Harry Styles fans in the chat. I'm so glad she mentioned the using people's insecurities as a marketing angle thing, even if only briefly. It never sits quite right with me either, TBH. I have a lot of mixed feelings about it, mostly because in marketing, they often teach you that like the best way to make a sale is to present someone a problem, make it worse, and then offer them a solution. And it's really easy to do that on someone's insecurities. It does irk me when brands use things that remind you of like mental health issues in their branding. I just feel like it's kind of inappropriate. It's the monetization of people's serious trauma and problems. And although the counter argument that this person is offering is that, well, it's okay because MGK specifically deals with mental health issues and has talked about it and like in his music is the argument basically. I think there's a few ways to interpret that. I think like as an artist, it's totally fair to share your experience. And I think there's something admirable about that. And I have read some of the lyrics of his songs just to educate myself. And I think it's fine, like there's, there's nothing wrong with telling your story in your artwork. I think the second you move from that to some kind of mass production where we're gonna sell that to people, I take a little bit of an issue. And that line is gray because you could also argue, well, he's making money off his records. Yes, sure. But then turning that into marketing for nail polish or anything for a broader consumer market who may not know of him or his issues and isn't making that connection kind of feels just wrong and I, I don't really have any other better words how to put that more like a smart intelligent person because it's been a long time since I've been in a sociology class it's been 10 years it can be problematic it's just the participation in this like mass consumption and the commodification of people's insecurities I don't think either of the creators would have personally seen the product a lot more than looking at it like modeling it at the end okay yeah that's something that we should definitely talk about because that's something I was so like so stupidly left that out of the video so my criticism at some part was that do they even paint their own nails on a regular basis or do they just like have their very talented celebrity nail artists who do their nails for them and oftentimes that may not even include their product. So like, are they an authentic user of their product that they're selling people who don't have access to manicurists that are celebrities to do them all the time? But the one thing I missed and didn't add to that was how involved are these artists in the actual creation of their own product? Because I personally think that that says a lot to me about whether or not they care about the brand, to what extent this is just like a clear revenue driver that their manager said, this is a great idea, let's make some money, let's start a brand. And uh, yes, that may sound extremely cynical, but this is how the this industry works. And I have seen and heard way too many things. And now it's hard to not think that that is the exact conversation that is going on behind closed doors. I don't know, did Harry Styles spend months trying out pleasing, painting his nails? Did he have input on the formulas, the colors, the packaging, the branding? Or did he hire a branding agency and a company to basically come up with all of the ideas, the formulas, and give very little feedback other than like, pink sounds good, and uh, let me pose for some pictures and get my nails painted. I don't know. It's hard to imagine that they are truly that involved, especially when it's so obvious that it was like a big branding agency that just made it. That's really clear with MGKs. Like it's so obvious that they didn't even have the name of the shades at the bottom of the bottle. <laughs> I don't know, it's just speculation, but you know. Anyways, <laughs> let's keep reading the comments. You got me at shout out to all the men who've been painting their nails for years. Yeah, like men have been painting their nails for years. I'm sorry, like this is not that revolutionary, sir. When a celebrity brand is super overpriced, that's almost always a surefire way to know that the celebrity isn't actually involved in the brand, it's just being paid for the use of their name. Oh my God, I could go on about this one forever because I actually know about the profit margins and uh, the alleged celebrity Liberty surcharge. Mm. No. Ben just spilled all of my pleasing. Harry's balls! They can't see the floor, but he spilled it all over the floor. Did it break? <laughs> I wanna die now. You, you dropped this. <laughs> this packaging sucks. 
That's something I was not as straight, <laughs> not as forth it's, it's coming. The packaging. <laughs> okay, well, um, pardon Ben's interruption. Where were we? You could get the kit for, what was it, $65? But individually, you could buy one or two of them for $20. I don't have the facts. I don't have their financial spreadsheets. But if I were to speculate, that's a giant fucking profit margin. But one thing I really want to point out that I didn't really drive home in the video, I think it's great to try and reduce waste, you know, landfills, etc. However, if that's gonna be a risk to your product and you're gonna break your bottles or the customer's gonna like open their package to a bunch of broken shit, uh, is that sustainable? I've definitely seen people point out that they received broken nail polishes. It seems like that was a consensus in the comments as well. And that's because of this. Like, oops, look, I, I just didn't even mean to do that. But these polishes don't stick in there. They just sit on top of this. They're not like held that well. And then what happens is there's too much room between where the nail polish is and the top of this box. So in shipping, especially if this platform kind of breaks, like it did right here. Oops, based on my experience, this looks like it did not go through enough QA to determine that this was in fact good enough packaging that would protect the product. Golf Le Fleur, let me first show you the package that arrived. Honestly, I am shocked at this packaging. They clearly made an effort, both of these brands at least, to come up with a cap that is Something we've never seen before and something that is really fucking weird to hold. <laughs> so it's $20 per bottle, which is the same price as Harry's when you buy pleasing singles. That's very expensive, in my opinion, for any nail polish. Prem nail polish, in my experience and understanding, is one of the least expensive types of nail polish to put in a bottle. I don't care how fancy your cap is unless it like has a real gold on it. I really question the profit margin. I mean, I don't question it, but I question how much of a profit margin did you really need? The cynic in me being like, really? Does this really need to be $20? I have to call that out that the celebrity surcharge on everything I've reviewed so far is just so obvious to me. Is MGK and Tyler the same bottle, different cap? Oh my God, guys. Yo, shut up. Really? A discovery. I did not know I would be making. <laughs> See that ridge around there? Oh my God, guys, I think they're the same bottle. <laughs> Let's do a brush comparison. I wanna lift these up to the camera, but uh, <laughs> they're gonna fall everywhere. And then my desk will be painted. Can't, oh my God, oh my God, Ben, just seriously don't drop it or I, I will murder. It's tough because the brushes aren't flared out like they would be when you're painting your nails. I feel like Harry Styles pleasing brush is probably the closest to like the hollow taco creme brush just for a reference so you guys know what I mean in terms of the the width of it. Machine Gun Kelly's one is so it's not that it's wide that's fine and wider nails like it kind of makes sense with the, their messaging but do you see how fucking like deep it is? Why? That's so weird. You can't like paint like that. It's thick in the wrong way. <laughs> I mentioned in my video that painting with MGK's brush was very difficult because, just to demonstrate, holding this is fine, right? Like I can hold that, feels great. There's not a weird flower or a giant ball on it. But when I try and paint, it's like so close that I don't have the room I need to paint without this part of the cap potentially like hitting the tip of my nail because the entire stem of the brush plus the bristle is so short that it's like the length of my nail. And like, look at my thumbnail, like what? Now, hey, I understand that I have longer nails than average. Totally get it. I'm not trying to say make your product for me. <laughs> However, nail polish is often used by people with different nail lengths. And this short brush just excludes people who have any kind of like somewhat long nail. All I'm saying is that I appreciate the effort to like shorten it a bit. I just think this was shortened way too much. Does the brush reach the bottom? Oh yeah, that's not close to the bottom at all. <laughs> that's like halfway in the bottle. Yeah, not good. This brush goes much closer to the bottom, not quite to the bottom because you need a clearance so that it doesn't actually, you know, get stuck or whatever. But at least you can get to almost the bottom of the bottle. I feel like there's improvements on the components that you can make for all of these brands. But then the other question is, what was their objective? 
which I don't want to ignore because like someone's going to listen back to this and say like, that's not the point, Christine. They're not supposed to know about nail polish. That's not the point. They're artists. They just want to show their brand and creativity. And of course, they're not going to know about nail polish things. And like, I, I get it. So they hired people to figure out what to do here. And those people just aren't perfectionists with nail polish. And the artists don't have time to be that perfectionist and they're maybe not that personally invested in nail polish. These three individuals who release nail polish, they all have worn nail polish. I see that in the news. You know, that is the premise for them launching a nail polish line. If you're gonna come out with a brand about something that you want your customers, your audience to wear, you better do your due diligence to make sure that it's a product that your audience is gonna feel proud to have purchased after they buy it and use it. Not just proud to have purchased because they love you and they wanna support you, but like, make good shit and you're responsible for that shit to some extent. There is so much responsibility I think involved as a brand creator for you to really have oversight, for you to uh, care about the construction of your product and not just the aesthetic that's being sold. I think what we'll be telling is what they do with these brands, how much they care about the quality of their products, how invested they are in advancing their products, improving and showcasing people that they do care. The cynic in me wonders like, are they gonna keep just releasing a bunch of creme polishes with the same edgy branding indefinitely until they can't sell anymore? And then just be like, we're done here? It's kind of sad, but that is how a lot of influencer or celebrity brands pan out if they find that they've reached their peak customer base once they launch. Before Holo Taco, I had a lot of conversations with different people at different levels of nail polish manufacturing. I wouldn't want to say too much while Ben is away picking up tacos and he'll be like, don't say that, we signed an NDA. But yeah, basically it would have been extremely easy for me to come out with a predominantly creme or basic glitter nail polish line in 2016. I had a ton of private label companies, influencer inc brand incubator companies. Probably what these brands all used was a brand incubator to come up with their branding, develop the story, and basically do all the work for them. And they just, you know, they're the pretty face. I had many of those opportunities. So many people told me, you can make so much money doing this, but like also choose the cheapest nail polish. <laughs> we need a Christine stop emote. <laughs> oh my God. Anyways, long story short, I didn't do that. But I am extremely pessimistic based on my experience with some of these people. Are there any female celeb nail polishes? Why so many men in the market? I actually can't think of it, which is really interesting. It's just been like a string of men recently. Nail polishes by Charlie D'Amelio. Didn't she, um, fuck who was that? But that wasn't her brand, right? She kind of looks like the same, is that the same bottle? <laughs> fuck. Why does everyone have the same square bottle? What is this, tacos? Should I end the stream? Have I said you too much? Like a How many NDAs did you violate today? <laughs> I, okay, hold on. Let me you're talk fine, some more. Let, let me just say one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> let me just say one more thing. I struggle with uh, being a brand owner, a content creator, someone who wants to think like, strategically and you know do all my research for something and make sure it's done well make sure that it's i'm taking careful considerations i don't like taking risks i don't want to fuck something up everything needs to be checked double checked triple checked and that is just me as a content creator and as a brand owner but i struggle with balancing that with telling you everything because there's a huge part of me that just wants to talk to you in an honest way because I have learned so much. I have so much that I would like to share from an honest and transparent perspective because I feel like you in this community, the people who are here right now are exactly the kind of people that I just wanna to talk to and give you all the contacts, tell you all the things, share all so you can understand all my decisions and it'll all make sense if I just explain everything. But unfortunately, sometimes that desire to share everything conflicts with the smart, intelligent business sometimes requirements to not share everything. And then I'm like, but, 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 do you know what I mean? 
Hope you guys had a good time and I encourage you to leave comments with thoughts that you have about this stream, what you liked, what you didn't like, what you'd like me to do next. So yeah, thank you to everyone who joined me and I will see y'all later. Bye.